Hot off the press, printed this this morning. The Harvard Business Review's latest research says this, that as much as 80% of employee turnover is due to bad hiring decision. A quick show of hands. How many of you have either hired someone and made a very poor selection or know of somebody within your team that has actually hired somebody that had a very negative impact on your company's bottom line by show of hands? Incredible. Almost every single one of you. You know, it's, it's most perhaps the most prevalent common challenge for every organization regardless of the size, but it also prevents, presents an incredible opportunity. Recently, Harvard Business Review also published an, a, a whole basically issue on the fact that it's time to blow up HR. Simply put, HR is not doing the job. They are not delivering the strategic value to companies that they would like. A high percentage of them don't even sit on the executive team. A large point, part of the time, they're not even consulted when it comes to hiring decisions and also uh, decisions as to, to let someone go. It, it is a, an incredible opportunity. I'd like to share a true story with you. Back in the fall of 2010, the height of the recession, a company engaged with me to help turn around their sales. It's the largest furniture retailer in the world. They have 25 football fields of furniture all in one location. 150 straight commission salespeople. What happened to this organization is that for seven consecutive years, they had negative sales growth. The company had been cut in half in terms of their total sales revenue. Every single one of their competitors around them, not as big as that company, but pretty good sizes, they all went out of business. There was an article that was written that said that of any retail segment, retail furniture has fallen the fastest, the farthest, and that there was really no hope of recovery. Pretty dismal statistics. Well, I went in to work with them. I evaluated all 150 of them. I spent some time with them one-on-one -on -one by using a very sophisticated assessment. And in the first 30 days that I worked with this company, they had a 48% increase in their sales. Absolutely unheard of. Well, very interestingly, CBS National News found out about this story and this incredible unmatched results, and they decided to fly a camera crew down, I think on a Wednesday, and then on a Saturday, in literally three or four days, we were the feature story, trying to reassure the economy or people and all the viewers that things weren't really as bad as what they, they seemed. But I'm here to tell you that all of the metrics were terrible, right? The unemployment rate was continuing to drop, right? The amount of people that were being laid off was continuing to rise. Uh, there wasn't really a whole lot of uh, rosy picture in terms of the economy. What I'm here to talk to you today is about hiring fast and firing fast. It's a contrarian view, but based on time-tested, proven, scientifically validated tools, I can conservatively, with every client that I work with, quadruple their hiring accuracy and effectiveness. Now, that's a pretty bold claim, isn't it? Quadruple. You know, it actually is consistent with my interactions with my clients. They tell me the very best that they are able to do is 20% consistently hiring high-performing people, regardless of the position. Now, when I go in and consult with companies, almost every company globally, 20% of their sales force consistently sells what? 80% of the total sales revenue. Now, interesting, we have the same equation. We have 80% of people being let go because they're bad hiring decisions. We only have 20% of organizations making great hires. There's a significant delta. Why? What's the difference? What's the problem? That's really what we're going to talk about over the next 20 minutes. Okay? So, based on my experience, it inspired me to write this book, Hire Fast, Fire Fast, Scientific Breakthroughs, on basically how to eliminate those costly, frustrating hiring decisions. Now, Gallup did a global research study and they found that merely 
Only 11% of the entire work population are spending the vast majority of their day working in their area of strength. Is it any wonder why we have a pandemic when it comes to a lack of employee engagement? People aren't alive when they're in their jobs because they're not doing what's specifically aligned with their natural strengths and areas of giftedness. Okay, almost everything I do is based on research and it's based on science and it's based on statistically validated instruments. Why? So that I can stand in front of you and I can with supreme confidence say to my client, that this works unlike anything else and it has a history of delivering unmatched results. So let me just give you a quick research study that we participated in. Actually it wasn't really quick, it actually took seven years. We evaluated over 200,000 people in 23 different countries, every role, every position, every industry from entry level up to CEO and everywhere in between. And here was the most important question. Why is it that some people consistently perform at their best? In other words, they achieve all their performance objectives in one given year, while the vast majority of people don't. In fact, what we found is that merely 9% of this 200,000 overachieved consistently their performance objectives. There was only two characteristics that were common in this elite 9%. The first characteristic is what we call self-awareness or self-knowledge, or self-insight. Simply put, the more that an individual knows about who they are, what's important to them, what they value, what they're motivated by, what their strengths are, also what their deficiencies are, the more they're able to make a better decision around a job, a career, a position that's really tightly aligned with what they naturally do best. The second characteristic of this elite 9% is what we call authenticity. Now it's interesting, the word authentic or authenticity translated from, from Latin means to create. When you and I simply put are authentic to how God has uniquely gifted and created us, we then can create the life that everyone wants, which one of fulfillment, one of satisfaction, one of performing at a high level, one of having the most meaningful existence. But here's the problem. If only 99% of the total population have a high level of self-awareness, that means that 91% have very little insight. I want you to think about that for a moment. Now, let me tell you a quick story. When I was a, a, a senior in college, this is actually a true story, I was an undeclared major. You say, how is that possible? I say my major was actually in confusion. I had no idea what I wanted to do for a living and what I wanted to be when I grew up, so to speak. So my advisor, who's an elementary professor education um, instructor, she said, John, I know exactly what you should do. Elementary education is dominated by women. We need more men. Why don't you do elementary education? So as my advisor, what do you think I did? I have a minor in elementary education. Now I soon found out when I went to the classroom that that wasn't my calling, that wasn't my gift. Simply put, 80% of the time when I travel internationally and speak, I ask these three questions. How many of you changed your major at least once in college? 80% of the people raised their hand. Second question, how many of you took a job that has absolutely nothing to do with your major in terms of the first job that you took out of, out of college? Again, another 80% of the people raised their hands. And finally, the job that you're doing now, did it have anything to do with the first job that you took? 80% of the time it has absolutely nothing to do with the first position that they took or the major that they took, okay? So what we have is we have a major self-awareness and self-knowledge problem, okay? Now, the tools that I use are very sophisticated. How many of you, out of curiosity, because a personality assessment is becoming more and more commonplace, is more and more prevalent, how many of you are familiar with the DISC profile? almost everyone in the entire room. That's fantastic. It is a tremendous tool and I use it fairly regularly. But the issue with just a behavioral or personality instrument is that it's one dimensional. It only has to do with your behavioral traits, your personality style. Let me show you something that's an absolute breakthrough. Okay? If you think about what I'm showing you here, which is the iceberg analogy, you'll see 
that what is visible to the naked eye in an interview is basically things having to do with your personality, right? How friendly you are, how outgoing you are, and so forth. Here's the challenge for everyone. 90% of what you need to know to make the best, the right hiring decision is hidden to the naked eye. It's below the surface. It's in here. Things like persistence, initiative, drive, resilience, the ability to handle rejection, self-confidence, the ability to connect with people quickly and easily and develop rapport. Those things can't be taught. Those things are innate, okay? So that's why going a lot deeper than a behavioral instrument is absolutely critical. You've been there, resumes, right? If the person wrote them themselves, it understates their ability. If they had professional help, it overstates their ability. Simply put, they're pretty much useless. People are much more complex than just a piece of paper, okay? Interviews. Interviews are very, very misleading, as we've just talked about, because you can't access that 90% of the information. That's why I'm able to consistently quadruple the hiring effectiveness. So, getting back to my story with Furniture Land South, they had a 55% sales turnover rate, a complete revolving door. That was really negatively hurting their business. Based on using the tools that, that, that we use, I was able to eliminate that 55% turnover rate completely. Because what happens when someone applies to a job, we evaluate these instruments to the top 10% of the people in the company that are performing consistently at the highest level. And if those scores don't mirror or aren't better than the top 10%, then we don't even interview them. I had a lady yesterday at a conference. She knew how much money she was worth per hour. She said, I am worth $1,600 per hour. Anytime you can save me from actually sitting down with somebody, and we've all been there, you sit down with somebody in 30 seconds, you know, how can I not be rude but yet cut this short because my time is valuable? We basically eliminate that problem from taking place because we only put someone in front of the hiring manager that has the sales DNA or has the administrative DNA, a person, quite simply, who can consistently perform at a very high level. Let me go a little bit deeper and tell you why this is so effective. One of the instruments that we use actually measures the hardwiring of the brain. It's incredibly fascinating. In fact, the guy that developed it would have won the Nobel Peace Prize, but he died, and you can't be deceased and win the award. It is an absolute transformational breakthrough. So let me explain something to you. A person's ability to connect and relate, again, has to do with the hardwiring of the brain. So I want you to think just for a moment of a security guard sitting in the lobby, and he's got three flat screen TVs in front of them. The flat screen TVs are identical, okay? 1080p, 240 hertz, it's the best that technology, that money that technology can buy. But there's a difference, a very significant difference. The first monitor, has bunny rabbit ears, okay? So what that means is, is that there's a bunch of static and snow, there's a lot of distortion, you can barely make out the silhouettes of people behind that static. The second one is a vast improvement, it's Time Warner Cable. And the third and final one is high definition. If you score really low in certain areas, what that means is, is that your brain is only able to process that in bunny rabbit ear reception. There's a lot of snow, there's a lot of distortion. You simply cannot and will not ever be able to be, have a high level of mastery in that specific area that we measure. If your brain conversely sees something in high definition and your scores are really high, that means that you are exceptional. It's part of what you were born with. Let me give you an example. I was doing some recruiting for a real estate company and I, I've never done this before, but one of the candidates that I spoke to, I said, your scores are perhaps the best I have ever seen out of evaluated over 100,000 of these instruments. Would you please do me a favor? Would you please send me an email in January after the, the whole year is done, and would you just let me know what your performance has been like? Now, you need to know this. A couple of points that are, that are important is that less than 5% of the total real estate agents in all of North America sell less than or, or sell more than $5 million of revenue, okay? 
Five million, less than 5%. This fellow was in a community with only 50,000 as a total population. The average house sale is only 200, excuse me, 230,000. It's not like California where the average house price is about 600 or 700,000. So he has to sell three times as many homes as somebody in this market here. He sends me his, his email, classic high driver, high achievement oriented person. John, I fell short of my goal. I sold $18.46 million, my goal was 20 million. I talked to the owner of the company at the conference yesterday. He said his goal is 25 million. And you know what folks? I have 100% conviction that he's gonna reach it. That folks was in his very first year with no real estate experience. We can play, I can tell you hundreds of stories similar to that. Why? Because he had the sales DNA. He had the right personality style, he had the right set of motivators, and most important of all, he had the right set of talents. Okay, earlier in my career I had the opportunity to work for the largest sales training company globally. They simply put, 85% of the Fortune 500 trusted this company with all their sales training. Why? Least risk vendor, the 800 pound gorilla, the creme de la creme. This was the old Xerox learning systems company. They sent everybody to Leesburg for six weeks and they drilled and did role plays until you couldn't take it any longer. But guess what? It was very effective. They turned that program into a three day program to offer the commercial market. I was the youngest person ever hired in the history of the company. In my first year, I sold more than anyone in the history of the company. In my second year, I took on half of the entire company's increase in quota and I was number three in the entire company. But that's not what I want you to take away from my story. My story is this, I had a crisis of conscience because you know what I found out? I found out that after the training, the high performers continue to be high performers, but what? The low performers continue to be what? Low performers. Sim there were, simply stated, there was no direct causal link between the training and an increase in sales. I've got a dilemma. I can't in good conscience with, with my high value of ethics stand in front of a, a senior executive say, if you just give me your salespeople for three days and then we do a follow-up program eight weeks later for two days, I guarantee you that we're going to increase your sales because it's a lie. It doesn't work that way. Simply put, the 80% that don't do, that, that aren't really generating that much revenue, don't have the same sales DNA or hardwiring of the brain or motivation, they're never going to be very good in sales. When I trained this 150 people at Furniture Land South, the top 20 people in the company had an average sales increase of 60%. I trained them every other week for 30 minutes for a year. The other 130 people were in the same room, heard the same message at the same time, and they had less than 10% increase. Because it's all distorted, folks. They can't see it. So what I'm talking to you about is an absolute breakthrough in hiring and in training. Because what happened with those 150 people after seven years of negative sales growth? They were the most disenfranchised, discouraged people, sales force I'd ever worked with in my entire career. Well, what happened was when I did the one-on-one -on -one session with them, I created a one-page what I call strength plan. And I told them everything that was good about that individual. And after they left that meeting, their puff was their chest was sticking out thinking, how good am I? And I told them exactly where their strengths reside. And in the first 30 days, we had a 48% increase in sales. So the very first week, typically somebody, one of my clients hires somebody, we have a call. The call goes something like this. What is your name, please? Denise. Denise? Mm -hmm. I would say, Denise, we have evaluated you against about 100 different candidates. It's not a matter of if you're going to be successful, but how successful you're going to be. Simply put, we know more about you than you know about you. Your personality style, your motivation, and your talents are all aligned with the top 10% people in the industry. We are so delighted that you're here. And then the, then the conversation proceeds from there. I have never, out of doing this thousands and thousands of times, have I ever had one person say they have experienced anything like that in their life. It dramatically ramps up the onboarding because who are you, do I like you, do I trust you? The manager has a one-on-one -on -one with that new employee. They share their strength plan information on how to communicate, what's important to them in terms of what motivates them and what their talents are, and they're both connected. We basically, you know, that first 90 days, you know, they're starting to perform at a high level almost immediately, just like that fellow from Minnesota. 
that real estate agent. Okay. So, does everybody remember back a long time ago, it's probably 10 or 15 years, Domino's came out with this breakthrough guarantee. They said, what is it? What all? What, what is it all? 30 minutes or what? Guaranteed delivery or what? It's what? Free. Now the perception was, that's incredible. 30 minutes or it's free. That's a great promise. The reality is, you know how much risk there was to them? Zero, because they had done significant amount of research and they found that virtually never do they ever have a delivery where the pizza is longer than 30 minutes. There was no risk to them. Similarly, what I do is that I offer a one-year unconditional guarantee for every single candidate. Let me explain that a little bit more. The typical industry standard is 90 days, three months. It's a joke laughable. I offer four times that. Why? Because I have such, I have access to such unbelievable intelligence and insight and advanced in terms of who they are that I'm virtually never wrong. There's no risk to me. The unconditional part is if your spouse was to get their dream job in Hawaii and you needed to move, right? I'll replace that person. It's not just for lack of performance, but you know something, folks? Much more important than the guarantee is the fact that you have an 80 to 90 percent level. You're consistently hiring rock stars, whether it's sales, whether it's supply chain, whether it's a chief operating officer, whether it's a project engineer, which are all positions I've placed in the last two weeks. It's the same. It's the same concepts apply. Okay. So let me just mention, I'll just close with one last story. The name of the company is called Utility Service Group. They're the, they're the company, they're number one in terms of market share, that climbs these above ground water towers and they have maintenance programs. They paint these huge towers. So you're looking at a very unique individual that's not scared of heights, got a blue collar work ethic, they're off the ground 100 to 150 feet, but they also have the savvy communication and presentation skills to be able to talk to the city mayor, engineers, etc. So when I first engaged with them, they had an 80% sales turnover rate, 80%. Their training program is two years in length. It's very comprehensive. They job shadow somebody in that person's territory. They have lots of different uh, certifications and accreditations that they have to pass in order to be in this role. It's a massive investment. Over $250,000 is a conservative, just direct cost of salary and benefits. When I met with the executive vice president of sales, he completely gave me the Heisman. Okay, not interested. Savvy Fortune 500 guy. He was just completely indifferent. He was jaded, similar to most executives, because it's so far out of their realm of their experience that they, it's too good to be true. I went on my way, but what I decided to do is go to hit the next level down, the regional vice president. I said, give me three of your people. I don't care who they are, but here's the criteria. I want you to give me one of your best, one of your worst, and then another person, I don't care who it is, it's up to you. The short story is I evaluated all three of those people and after I went through the evaluation of all three people, the, senior ex the regional vice president immediately called up the executive vice president and said this, this is the most incredible thing that I have ever experienced. John just told me more about my people than I know about them after working with them for four years. I was able to identify the highest performing person, tell him exactly why he's the high performer. I was able to identify the lowest performer, exactly why he's going to continue to be a low performer. And I was able to identify a person who was stuck and how to get him unstuck. So we were able to, we were able to uh, do business together. And because the EVP was so skeptical, uh, what I did is I went the extra mile is I, in evaluating his entire sales force of 40 people, I told, I basically evaluated everyone. I said, here are your top 10 salespeople based merely on the scores alone. Didn't have access to anyone's performance, didn't know anybody in the company. And wouldn't you know, nine out of the 10 that I evaluated were responsible for 80% of the total sales revenue for the company for the last four years. The 10th person was brand new to the company. 
this guy's profiles were some among the best I'd ever seen, and I, and I made a point of telling him so. In his second year, he was the number one rep in the company. He was the youngest person on the sales staff. He had no prior experience, and he sold over $7 million worth of business. The company, over 50 years in business, had never seen a new rookie in their second year be number one, let alone sell $7 million worth of business. Unbelievable. It's typically, the, the training program is two years in length. You're typically not even productive in selling half a million dollars in your second year because you're not even really in your territory by yourself yet. That's the difference that having this access to these types of tools can make. So, you've heard me speak about some, some things that are outside your realm of your own experience. So the best possible thing is really is for you to experience firsthand yourself. So if you would like to test drive these capabilities, all you have to do is you just have to go to my website, which is thetalentgenius.com, thetalentgenius.com. I will happily evaluate your highest performer, your lowest performer, tell you why the high performer is the high performer, why the low performer is the low performer. And let me just mention this. I have never once been wrong. Why? It's not me. Yes, I have an un unusual ability to interpret these assessments. It's because these are time-tested, scientifically proven, and statistically validated tools that were almost guaranteed to quadruple your hiring effectiveness, whether it's sales, whether it's admin, regardless of the position that you're looking to hire. It's an absolute game changer. Thank you very much.